Okay, good morning everyone. So welcome to this online open day webinar. Uh, today we will talk about the bachelor program and uh, here with us we have the pleasure to have Dr. Patrice Argenti, who is the program director of the bachelor's program. Good morning everybody. Uh, we also have the pleasure to have with us a special guest, so Liam Armstrong, who is a third year student uh, bachelor here at IOM. Hello everybody, thanks for the invite. And uh, we will have with us a little bit later, Marine Giannini uh, from the Career Services. who will talk about internships and the network and so on. So uh, today we will talk about so the bachelor's program and we are here to answer all the questions you may have. So don't hesitate to use the Q&A button. You can write down your question and we will be glad to answer uh, your questions. So now, Dr. Patrice Argenti, the floor is yours. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you very much, Laure. Uh, so good morning, everybody. My name is Patrice Sargenti. I am the director of the bachelor program at the University of Monaco. I joined the university in 2002, so it's 18 years ago. I am in charge of the program since 2010. <clears throat> My field of activity is knowledge management when it goes to research, and I'm teaching IT because I have an engineering background. Today, we are going to cover a bit the mission of the university. We are going to speak about uh, some key figures uh, and then accreditation and the specific philosophy of what we do at IOM uh, because uh, it's a very special institution, you'll see, with a particular way of doing. I'm, I'm sure students enjoy it. Liam is with us. So Liam is a, is a student in, uh, in the third year of the bachelor and um, some key words maybe uh, will be highlighted by example uh, with uh, Liam with us because now he's experiencing uh, IUM since a long time. Uh, Liam, it's okay for you if I ask you questions during the presentation? Yeah, for sure. Of course. Good. So, uh, first of all, we, we start always uh, these presentations by speaking about the mission statement of the university. It's important because uh, through this mission statement, we have keywords that explains clearly what we do. Uh, so if we start by the beginning, IOM aims to educate. Uh, so we are an educational institution. Uh, that means that our professor, whether they are full-time professor, uh, researchers have as a first task to dedicate you know, their time for teaching and following students, which is very important. The second keyword you see highlighted here is responsible business leader. We are convinced that uh, tomorrow you will be uh, managers, leaders uh, throughout the world, but responsible is a motto for us, speaking about sustainability, speaking about business ethics, speaking about uh, corporate social responsibility, these are keywords that cannot be, you know, avoided. Huh? Whether you will do finance, whether you will do, I don't know, management in general, global business, responsible business leader is a mood. Yeah. Liam, do you agree? These are the kind of uh, concepts that we cover during the classes, throughout the classes, in fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, these are the, the core concepts. Well, it, they are really important as um, to form you as a leader. You, you got general courses and um, throughout all the years, they help you to, um, to succeed for, after the graduation. Thank you. So we are specialized in what we call niche market. Niche market in line with the territory that is working, uh, welcoming, welcoming us. First of all, uh, we are specialized in luxury, uh, hospitality, fashion, goods and services, sport management, hospitality, financial services, and global business as well, because Monaco is a big hub uh, with a lot of companies, you know, more than 5,000 companies in the two square kilometer territory. So it's a huge business hub uh, where students, you know, can interact. It's the playground of our students. The second paragraph highlights a bit our DNA. Uh, first of all, we are very small. Uh, we have uh, 650 students, which is very stimulating, very international. Liam, from where do you come from? I come from the south of France, uh, exactly Avignon, but uh, I have uh, my mom is Algerian, 
and my dad's English. Exactly. And uh, so all is... my all my classmates are either from Tunisia, they're from Romania. It's really interesting to have uh, an international kind of a uh, class classmates. Yeah, yeah. It it is it is stimulating because the student population coming from in IOM more than seventy three nationalities um, makes you know the in class discussion very stimulating. This is really a cross cultural environment. Okay. And another DNA particularity of our population and our, our institution is this entre entrepreneurial spirit with the collaborative work, this experiential learning, uh, because there is a lot of projects, a lot of connections, doing things for real during the class, and mutual understanding, which is horizontally or vertically with the open door policy with the professor, you know, students can be only open-minded because they are coming from so much, so many different backgrounds that they cannot, you know, uh, be narrow-minded, you know, thinking about, you know, their own way of thinking. It has to be open to the difference, to the diversity of the population. Uh, the research here is in line with the teaching and with the niche market we are doing, okay? So we are interacting, so we have a DBA, so it's an applied research concept. Our professor, PhD, are doing research in the field of specificity that we have, so uh, innovation, CSR, sustainability, luxury management. Uh, and uh, this research is here to support the teaching uh, because uh, when the PhD professor, you know, is coming in class with, uh, you know, what he did and what he hear, he heard in the previous conferences he was in, the class will be definitely richer. And normally they forecast to what is or what will be key business issues within five years. I think they are a bit in advance. So that's important. And of course, there is a balance uh, because we have this experiential learning with our full-time professor, which are doing research. We balanced it with our practitioners. So we have uh, more than 100 practitioners coming from the real business world here to teach students, you know, the class, but with through the window of the reality. Uh, so that makes it, you know, grounded to the earth uh, with real project, with real contact with real people outside. And that makes us very connected to the business world, which is uh, around us, particularly in Monaco, because we are definitely part of the, this little territory. You know, we, have the only, we are the only university in, in this territory. And uh, definitely, uh, we, we are benefiting from you know, Monaco and, and the specificity of this marvelous country. But as well, you know, the country is willing to support us because they understood that uh, having uh, 600 students coming study to Monaco every year, it's a kind of a dynamism um, process for the, for the territory. Uh, we are part of the INSEC U group, which is the, the major player in France for uh, business higher education, uh, which is 26,000 students, I think. Few, few key figures about us. Um, first of all, we, we are young. Now, we have been created in 1986. So um, this is quite very young for an institution. We are 34 years. Um, all our diploma are recognized by the Principality of Monaco. Uh, our portfolio of diploma are ranging from the Bachelor to the Master of Sciences we have, MBA and DBA, which is the Doctorate of Business Administration. So the population of students is 650. Well, we have around you know, 80 nationalities in the student population. There is no dominant nationality. The population number one is, uh, are the French, uh, which is local because they are they're normal, they are locals, but uh, it represents only 25% uh, of our population. So uh, then the second one are the Italian, which are uh, let's around 18, 15 to 18%. And then we have uh, Eastern Europe students and then UK and American students. So it's good because uh, there, is, there is no big you know, majority of French students. The speaking, uh, of course, teaching language is English uh, in the University of Monaco. Uh, we are located in center town. Uh, so we don't have, you know, as we call a campus with you know, special facilities. But 
you know, a two square kilometer country is definitely the campus of uh, the university uh, and students can benefit from, um, from, from the territory directly. We have a specific alumni population. It's 3,300 alumni all over the world. So it's not a huge number, but what is very specific, because we have been always very international, is that these alumni, you know, are really located in more than 100 different countries. And they are particularly, because this is a specificity of how we interact with the students, they are particularly connected with us. Yeah? There is this uh, spirit here at IOM, which is a bit different than in other institutions. Um, a lot of engagement from everybody, um, a, a real connection between uh, the institution, the students, and the alumni. Liam, can you confirm that maybe that, uh, you know, the door are open, people can discuss, how is your experience about it? Yeah, particularly about the alumni. So, um, as uh, I run an association within uh, IUM, we started contacting alum uh, alumni that works in finance. So, we, we find out that there's some alumni that really has solid post. Uh, some are working in London and Morgan Stanley, some worked at Citigroup. Well, you, you really have uh, some solid alumni, so yeah. And they're really accessible, so uh, you just go go and talk to them nicely and they will reply nicely. And uh, yeah, it can open some doors for you as well, for the network and really important things. Thank you, Liam. Bon, as, as you could see, Liam is interested in finance. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we continue. Uh, so we have uh, a population of full-time faculty, as I already mentioned, 28. They are full-time professors, you know, living in Monaco, working at IOM every day. Uh, and we have 100 adjunct faculty. They are either practitioners, professionals, and some of them are visiting faculty, you know, working in other universities and coming to teach, you know, very specific niche, uh, specialized classes at IOM. Um, we have, uh, of course, another accreditation for the institution, which is AMBA. This is for the uh, MBA that uh, we have here. You see that uh, the distribution of the population is quite uh, uh, balanced between women and men. Uh, we have around 50% of it. Uh, our new location since one year now is uh, called the Stella building. It's in Monaco center town, directly at the end of the railway station. Um, we have 15 classrooms, 2,000 square meters. So finally, it's, uh, it's, it's as uh, we are, you know, it's a small, uh, quite well equi equipped, very cozy and uh, very, uh, I think, comfortable to work. Uh, I am. You can you can maybe make some comments because if I remember well, you experienced the two buildings. Yeah. So uh, one one year one year and a half ago, we were at uh, the Monaco football stadium. So it was uh, well quite a long way from the train station. I was coming from Nice. Well, 15 minutes. It's not a big deal. But now we are at the really center of Monaco. So five minutes walk from the port and uh, you got everything uh, next to you. So it's quite, it's quite efficient. Definitely central and, uh, you know, brand new, quite, quite, uh, quite comfortable, I, do, I, should, I should admit. Uh, we have a cafeteria where the library is putting the newspaper every day. Uh, so, uh, of course, that, that makes, you know, the, the life easier. We have a Bloomberg, we have a writers as well. This slide is more, you know, about uh, the, the philosophy of education that uh, we want to give you. Maybe you started having an idea about that. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a balance, a uh, clear balance between the theory and the application. Uh, we need to ground, you know, knowledge into, uh, you know, theory, philosophy, in order to be able to build uh, things uh, grounded properly. But, and this is definitely something we are convinced on. Uh, we have to apply our knowledge. Uh, we have to do things. Uh, we have to generate, you know, this uh, entrepreneurship period by understanding the concrete world and applying it to the concrete world. So, and that's why, you know, there is a good balance. You bachelor students um, will be exposed to one third of your classes 
full-time faculty, PhD, professors, and two-thirds of your studies uh, with practitioners, okay? And even in the bachelor first year level, you will be, you know, exposed to professionals. You know, we do real projects for real world, external people, you know. So when you have to deliver, uh, you have to do it uh, particularly uh, uh, well done uh, because uh, professionals are expecting something which may be a bit different than uh, your classmate and only your professor, you know, in front of the class. Uh, the cooperative and the collaborative learning is definitely uh, something that for us is very important. Uh, we are not here, you know, to compete each other and, you know, to have, you know, only few of you that are emerging. Uh, we are here to learn how to work together and how to support each other. Uh, this is definitely the philosophy of IOM. Uh, we are here all together, we are a team, and I am convinced that, you know, whatever you will do in your life, if you want to do it at a certain la level and at a certain size, you won't be able to work on your own. So you have to work in team. So definitely, if we have some students, you know, that are maybe, you know, struggling sometimes with some particular topic, there are other students that are here to help. You need to be open-minded to understand the difference of people. And, and then you have to use your skills, not for yourself only, but to help, you know, bringing the entire group, you know, to achieve uh, what needs to be achieved. I don't, I'm not speaking about, you know, um, cheating or whatever. I'm speaking about, you know, really collaborating. We have this tutoring system, which exists at IOM. It's in place. We have second and third year students that are, you know, for free, helping first year students. Uh, they are, um, you know, using the facilities in the evening, working, you know, uh, in, in particular difficult topics like mathematics or statistics. There, these two of second or third year students had a good grade, you know, in the previous year, you know, usually I, I choose the A students and usually all my A students are definitely willing to help. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we invite you know, the students that are in the first year, you know, struggling a bit, you know, to be helped, uh, definitely. So they are teaching, in fact, in class, you know, uh, supporting the students and understanding um, what are the missing parts uh, in their knowledge uh, with students' word. You know, when the peers is explaining to a peers, sometimes see, it comes better. Uh, the multicultural learning is definitely here. You know, uh, 18 nationalities in the student population. When you have a class, you know, it's around 30 students in a class. Uh, you should have 15 to 20 different nationality and then um, let's let's speak about the business ethics class or the the sustainability class uh, of course the professor and the teaching is american way you know the flipped class uh, um, fostering discussion in class the professor you know will will clearly develop the multicultural learning by having asking the students to share their own experience you know coming from um, their own country their own culture you know the, 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 these ethical concepts are not maybe the same uh, and the true uh, in another uh, area of the world. And it is interesting when in class, you know, when you have 15 different nationality like that, people start exchanging. And then that makes, you know, the class super lively. Uh, the classrooms are small, you know, 50 seats maximum. So then we can definitely you know, foster interaction between, uh, between students. Uh, we can, you know, give them the word and have them to speak each other. So this multicultural learning is there definitely because every example we use in class, everything we do is based on international, but is definitely more there because of the student population. Uh, Liam, do you, do you confirm this concept? Do you have something to add about it? No, 100%. Uh, the fact that, um we are studying in little groups. It's uh, really foster the, the team interaction. So um, it's, it just can be benefit for you. And oh, also yes. uh, with the, the professor, the interaction with the professor that you don't usually see in other university is quite important. Yeah, I do agree. So projects are present in almost every classes. What makes it very 
particular is that students are so diverse that uh, having a project, uh, you know, managed by uh, students with uh, five different nationality in, in the project team, uh, that, that makes the management of the project uh, sometimes tough. Uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, yes, students are coming back to me to share the difficulties they have. And this is exactly the management learning experience that we want, you know, because then you have to find the keys, you know, to have these people from Asia working properly with this American, with a Middle East guy in the middle, and they clearly does not have the, mem the same way of thinking, way of understanding what are due, what are, you know, compulsory and what should be, you know, the right way of doing things. And this is exactly this international learning uh, that uh, we were speaking about. The last box here is active learning. Uh, th this part is uh, th something that is linked to entrepreneurial spirit, doing things, making things. Uh, I, I ask my students to be super proactive in, in, in their, you know, managing their studying life um, and, you know, proposing things, developing things. Uh, Liam, you are part of those, uh, definitely, because uh, you, you created uh, and you are managing in, in the right way um, this finance society at IOM. Uh, just an, an example, so this is a real concrete example, uh, of uh, what means be, being an active learner at IOM. So, um, an active learner is uh, someone that learn from uh, something and then put it in place. So um, you got to put in place and uh, find the good partners. And um, yeah, you don't have to rely on, on everybody. You have to, to work yourself out and um, put this in place. I do agree. Uh, so you did the finance society. What do you do? What, what is this finance society about? So uh, we created the, the finance society with my partner, Andrea Prola, who's an Italian guy. So uh, back this summer, uh, we're working on a website, uh, etc., and we launched it in uh, September. So uh, in September, we did the selection process. We had up to 90 registration, and uh, we only took uh, 50. So we have 50 members now, and uh, we welcome guest pictures such as uh, Goldman Sachs, ICG Capital, who comes from different different sector of finance. So corporate finance, uh, asset management, private banking. So we we kind of mix mix uh, the financial uh, subjects and um, yeah for the moment it, it's quite working working really well we have 30 attendees at each uh, guest lecture and uh, we recently we did a trading competition which was quite challenging and uh, that challenged all our members uh, so um, the winner of this competition was uh, admitted to a boot camp with the best universities in, in Europe so there was Oxford Cambridge, and there was two of our members that was admitted to a boot camp. So they, they it was quite excited. So uh, yeah, for the moment we um, we are doing an, two events next week: alumni uh, in finance, and uh, another one breaking into consulting with KPMG, KPMG in Monaco. So um, yeah, if you want to, to know more about it, go and check our website and uh, go and check our LinkedIn as well. Hey, good, 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 good. Uh, thank you, Liam. So this is definitely an example. We are small, you know, very agile. Uh, we are lucky enough, you know, the, there is no lockdown in Monaco. So we are still, you know, operating more or less normally. We have this distanciation. So we are, but, uh, you know, students are coming to class. They can welcome, you know, guests, be physically present. So that's, that's amazing. In fact, it's, it's a super good experience. And, uh, you know, to finish with this particular slide, uh, the individual attention. Uh, students are at the core, you know, they are small enough, you know, not to hide, uh, to be able, you know, to propose and to do things um, with the support uh, of, the, of, of the, the team here. Uh, uh, Liam for the Finance Society, I remember we discussed a lot, you know, last year before they launched it, we, we worked together, they went to see the career services department as well, to have people, you know, uh, to have the help and understanding what they can do, what they cannot do, you know, to finally do it properly. And they are followed by a professor. Uh, Damir is uh, the professor, which is, you know, linked to them. So it's definitely, uh, it's a learning activity, but it's an entrepreneurial activity as well. And this is one example, but with the student association, of course, we have plenty uh, of that uh, because it's important. And of course, 
the, the idea is to follow it. Uh, yeah, I can tell you that uh, if you try to launch something at university, you will have full support from, uh, first of all, the, the top management, Patrice Gianti, the activity association with Marin Giannini, Sophie De Lorenzo. So yeah, if, if you work uh, really good, they will, they will help you. They will do our be their best. Yeah, yeah, sure. definitely. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, thank you. So we, we went uh, into this general presentation and uh, about, you know, who we are. If you have some questions or, you know, to, to go through that topics, um, uh, maybe, uh, Laure, you are following uh, the question and answer. Is there any particular topic? Maybe it's the right time to answer now? Yes, so we have a lot of questions for Liam about the student life in general and uh, activities and uh, things like that. So maybe you can answer all now or at the end of the presentation as you wish. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so Liam. <laughs> but what are the questions? Uh, it's about how is the student life at IOM in general. It's a university, but also in Monaco uh, for the expenses, for instance. So something very general. And, uh, and also about uh, the fact that if it's important to speak French uh, at IOM and in Monaco for the student life too. Okay, so uh, let's start about uh, the expenses. So uh, the expenses, uh, there is many people that, uh, because they, they think about Monaco, they will say, oh, it's uh, really expensive, etc." So no, if, if you really manage well your money, you will, you will, um, you will get up uh, on a good point. So uh, for the for the expenses, if you manage it good, you normally it's okay for you. So uh, on the student life, the student life is quite good actually. We have a couple of association, um, different association, karting association, uh, chess club. So the student life is quite good, um, and it's really active, really active um, because of, with our president, uh, we, which is really active and good, we we have many uh, interaction. So um, for French learning um, in Monaco, there is a um, couple of internships that require French, but it, it's not, it's just a couple of banking, banking um, companies. But the main language is, uh, is English because it's an international environment. And um, yeah, basically uh, it's mainly English. Okay, thank you. So, and uh, what about activities? In IOM, is... but also outside, like sports or things like that? Oh, yeah. Um, so you can play golf. Uh, I was myself the, the captain of the golf team. Um, you can play football. There is a football team. Uh, there is a sailing club now, uh, which is in partnership with the, um, the Yacht Club of Monaco. And it's, quite, it's not expensive at all. It's like 250 euros a year to, to sail. So it's quite a good deal. And uh, yeah, you've got many other activities like tennis, tennis, there's a tennis club. And uh, yeah, yeah, there is a quite a good range of activities. We also have partnerships with gyms in Monaco and outside Monaco. So yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Liam. And Patrice, we also have questions for you. Yes. So uh, Sophie would like to know uh, why she would choose uh, IOM over, for instance, LSE or La Bocconi. So if you... Okay, oh, uh, well, this yeah. is a very good question. Um, yeah. so, so specificity uh, of, of IOM compared to uh, the others. Number one, Monaco. Yeah? Bocconi is not in Monaco and LSE is not in Monaco. So uh, that's, that's one of the main, the territory and, and, and all the specificity that are coming with the territory. Yeah? Uh, super big hub, people that are so accessible because you know we call that you know a global village uh, and it's it's a country but it's it's a global village and if we want to reach you know the top executive people um they, they are just you know crossing the the street and and then we can see them and they are because it's monaco super willing you know to help and to and to participate so the territory and the specificity of the territory number one Number two, uh, of course, um, the, the, the size of IOM makes us very unique. Uh, 600 students, 
uh, I, I'm not sure if we are the smallest university in the world, but we should not be far from being the smallest accredited uh, university, uh, you know, in the world. Um, and, and the quality of studies, the quality of the pedagogy we have with this size, you know, is at another level, uh, clearly, because, you know, uh, students cannot hide, students can interact, professors are available. Um, they are, we were speaking yesterday with some students, you know, the, the, we were saying to each other that Monaco, there, there are less problems uh, because of the environment, which is super quiet, super safe, uh, very specific. So then we can focus on other things. Yeah? That makes finally the experience, you know, uh, better for the students. In terms of academic life, uh, uh, we are definitely less theoretical than London School of Economics, uh, definitely. Uh, we are more applied. Uh, this experiential education component, uh, once again, uh, we can do students' work, project, we can follow them up, uh, but uh, we don't have a team of 100 uh, people, professors, following the students uh, because we don't have thousands of students. Uh, so th that's uh, the, the, the good part of being able to implement this experiential education uh, in, because of the size. So we can you know, follow the students in the right way. And the last one, can be the, the topic we teach, you know. In Monaco, the Master in Luxury is the oldest in Europe. Uh, it's more than 12 years now, or 13 years, that uh, we, we, we have this Master in Luxury. And it evolved uh, because of the market. It's the market that is coming to us to say, okay, can you add this specialization? Can you do that? Uh, for us as well, for the bachelor, uh, the, there is a third year specialization that we created to serve the demand of the territory, you know? So we are really connected uh, with, with, the, with the territory and the niche market we are working. I think that we are the only university in the world with a yachting track. Huh? So uh, you can, in the Master in Luxury, uh, we are speaking about yachting, diamond, uh, some specific uh, sector, uh, your, your, your design, I think, if I remember well. So these are, these are very niche markets. Does that answer your question, Laura, or maybe uh, Sophie? Or Valérie, I don't remember. I think it is inside. I don't see good clarification. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's uh, perfect. And we also have another question for you, Patrice. So yes. there is Marius Alexandru who would like to know uh, about the opportunities for the event and entertainment management specialization. So for the year. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this is. He... <laughs> Sorry. Because I think uh, I already uh, know the program very well, so. <laughs> okay. So uh, definitely, this uh, you know there is in Monaco. Uh, we are used to say that there are two events per day. Yeah. So uh, in the event management, uh, of course, this day, even if there is no lockdown, a lot of events are postponed or reduced. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of opportunities to have event management. We have these kind of events that everybody knows. The Grand Prix, you know, this is a super event. And as well, it's used for the sport management um, master, uh, you know, or, or specialization. Students are involved with the tennis, uh, the, the country club here, uh, the Rolex master. Uh, but we have other events that are even bigger, you know, the, the Yacht Show in Monaco in September. It's huge. And all the masters in luxury are, are you know, working in, and, uh, you know, finding opportunities, doing internships in the Yocho, the organization and the event itself. So event management is clearly, you know, uh, something that is clear in line with, with, the, with, with the, the principality. We have this communication and event management uh, track, uh, specialization at the third year, and uh, in to the, the, the next step is in the, the master in luxury uh, with the hospitality and event management specialization. Uh, they, are, they are all definitely linked to the territory. There are internships, you know, uh, I will explain that a bit later, but uh, uh, every, every, all the time. So the idea is to do, you know, these internships um, in, in these companies that are, you know, organizing major events in Monaco. But, uh, big, big, big events. Huh? Uh, but there are conferences as well, you know, with, uh, in the music award, the TV award. Uh, there are so many events in Monaco that uh, this is particular. Uh, yes. Does that answer? Yeah, thank you. And uh, we also have questions about the recognition of the diploma. 
-hmm. So how about that? And how about also the ECTS or the US credits? Okay. From Lilian. So, so the, the, the IOM diploma are all recognized. Um, we are audited by FNESH, which is a French uh, audit uh, uh, institutions that are giving the visa for Grand École. In, in France. Uh, so they are coming to Monaco be, under the demand of the government and uh, every five years we have an audit from FNEJ and they give the recommendation to the Monégasque government for the recognition of the diploma. Today, uh, and since uh, all the time in fact, our diploma are recognized. Last one was in 2018 if I remember well or 17. Uh, the recognition is published in the Journal Officiel de Monaco uh, and uh, this year, uh, the last one, uh, because we asked for it, it was recognized, the publication was about the, 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 the level, so a three-year degree, 90 US credit, equivalent to 180 ECTS credit. And the other one for the bachelor was 100 and US credit, uh, equivalent to the master one level, 240 ECTS credit. The ECTS credits are not, you know, yet authorized uh, in Monaco because Monaco did not sign, you know, Bologna Agreement, but they cannot sign Bologna Agreement before they sign the academic cooperation with Europe. I know that uh, the Prince, with our General Director, Jean-Philippe Muller, they started the discussion with the European Union. Uh, it will take some time. We are already uh, ready uh, to, to deliver ECTS credits, but for the moment, we deliver US credits and we show the equivalence in ECTS credit. This equivalence is published, so it's recognized, it's officially recognized. Now, uh, that being said, all the diploma, and that's the, the case since I'm working at the IOM, all the diploma that are recognized by the Monegasque government, so we have the visa, it, the diploma themselves are signed by the Ministry of Education, as far as the country recognizes, you know, something inside their country, all the other countries around the world that are recognizing the country itself as a country, uh, uh, re recognized by transitivity what they recognize. That means that our diploma are valid all over the world, okay? And that's uh, since a long time. Uh, they are, the, since 2017, uh, recognized with an equivalent in ECTS credits, okay? And to be honest, I'm working at IOM since 18 years. Um, my students, you know, after the bachelor, the majority of them comes to, you know, the masters we are doing at IOM, but some of them are going to uh, other schools. And uh, there have been never any issue, you know, with uh, recognition of diploma to join a master degree after the bachelor. Yeah. So this is uh, something which is, uh, we are well recognized, you know, all over the world in the academic world. We had students going to uh, London School of Economy, London Business School. Uh, we have students in Hult, we had students in Bocconi, in Louis, uh, in, in plenty, you know, and in America, of course, uh, that's uh, more natural. But, uh, you know, there is zero problem in terms of uh, diploma recognition all over the world. Uh, sometimes uh, they come back to us with additional questions. We give them the, the list of class, the description of the courses. Uh, but as far as you deliver, you know, give them your transcript and you give them your diploma, normally there is no problem. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely recognized because it is. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Okay, we yeah. continue? So, yeah, I think we can go on with the presentation. Okay, so now we are going to narrow down a bit the, the presentation and to speak a bit more in detail about uh, the, the, the student uh, courses, academic life, what they experience here at IOM. So the, the first uh, point is that uh, in the University of Monaco, the first three years are dedicated to the Bachelor of Business Administration. In the Bachelor of Business Administration, we have five specialties that are coming, you know, at the third year level. Uh, we do global business, communication event management, luxury marketing sales and services, sport business management and international finance. The idea, you know, of the Bachelor, it's that we start with, you know, a 360 coverage of academic topics needed in management in general, and then slowly we are converging. You do internships, you see uh, what you like, you do classes, you see what you dislike, and then slowly you start choosing your specialty for your third year. We finish, you know, the third year with an internship. 
and normally you jump to the master level. Uh, in the masters, we have uh, again five specialties: uh, master in luxury with three uh, master degree, brand management, fashion and accessories, and hospitality and event management. We have a master in marketing, which is the discipline marketing. We have a master in finance and, and marketing, luxury goods and services as well, but it's a discipline marketing. In finance, we have two uh, degree uh, specialization, hedge funds and private equity, and private banking and wealth management. So. On one side is more linked to uh, client relationship, you know, to, to work as a, a, in, a, in a private bank to, to manage, you know, the, the money of a client. And in hedge funds is more alternative investment. It's a bit more, you know, technical. We have an MBA, uh, which is as well in the master level, but our MBA is uh, accredited by AMBA. Most of the students, you know, cannot join our MBA directly after the bachelor because it is uh, reserved to people with three to five years of professional experience. I have in the bachelor some older students that already had a little, you know, work experience, three years, five years in diverse activities. So some of them, you know, join the MBA directly after the bachelor, but the majority of our students, they go into a master of science in uh, one of the five previous specializations. And finally, we finish. We have three more years of studies, which are the doctorate level. Uh, we have a DBA, which is a called the Doctorate of Business Administration. Basically, is a, is a philosophical dissertation, but applied. Applied on business practice. And people that are doing the DBA, usually, they are people that are continuing working, and they want maybe to go a bit further, uh, you know, in the theory of their field of activity in order to be able to jump maybe at another level of their career. Um, because the DBA tomorrow uh, will be the program needed, you know, uh, to, to, to seek for top executive position as the MBA was for the last 20 years. That's uh, my, I'm convinced about it. So we spoke about rec recognitions. Uh, we have the AMBA accreditation since 2005. Um, we, we are uh, in the final step of the ACSB process. And if everything went well, you know, two weeks ago, we had the final audit. And normally, um, we should be uh, ACSB accredited uh, within a few months uh, now. So our diploma will have the second accreditation. We have the FNEJ as well audit with the recognition of the uh, diploma for the country inside. Uh, and it is coming from the France. So this is for us very important. Uh, we are ranked as well. Uh, so one of the rankings we are in, uh, are the Economist. Uh, we are in the top 100 MBA in the Economist. Our MBA is ranked 71 this year, which is more than honorable, you know. We are in the top 100 list in the world where we have, you know, Stanford, Harvard, uh, London School of Economy and all that. So uh, the ranking, you know, is, uh, you know, uh, giving you uh, the league where we are uh, with the, uh, the, the additional second accreditation we'll have. We are definitely, uh, you know, working in, in this league. Uh, okay, so uh, do we have additional questions? We more global or can we go into directly the, the, the program now? No, I think you can go to the program directly. Okay, so we are here to speak about the Bachelor of Business Administration. I know I speak a lot, but uh, this is the purpose of today's meeting. So we need to, to go into the details. So uh, let, let's speak about the architecture of the program. Uh, it's covering three years of studies. Uh, we are delivering a three-year degree or a four-year degree. Huh? So the three-year degree is the European format of the bachelor, the BBA, uh, and then after you continue in master one. Uh, but we keep, you know, this 120 US credit bachelor degree. We call it the honor track of the BBA uh, because historically uh, the bachelor at IOM was a four-year degree uh, because it was an American institution. In the US, uh, the bachelor is covered in four years. And then after, the students are jumping to the master. Uh, to be able to enter in a master in the USA, you need to have the equivalent of 120 US credit. OK? So we homogenized our bachelor you know, with the majority of students that are doing the three-year degree. Uh, so the bachelor is a three-year degree. But we kept this option. Uh, but still in three years. Uh, to have the honors track and to have the students 
getting a four-year diploma, you know, in three year times, uh, you know, you save one year. Time is money, uh, definitely. Um, the, the, the costs are slightly above, you know, a few thousand euro, but nothing to see with one additional year to spend in the USA before starting the master. No uh, comparison possible. So it's, it's a good opportunity for you guys. If you want to push a bit more, uh, of course, in the, to be a bit eligible for the honors track, we wait one term to see how the students are performing and then we can propose the honor track to the above 80 uh, average uh, after the first term. Uh, so the honor track starts the st second step. So basically the first year are the foundations. Foundation of business in fall, foundation of management in the second term in spring. Uh, we have two terms per year. And the specificity is that we have two intake as well. So students can start in January as well uh, if they, for example, started medicine, started the prepa, or uh, went abroad, but it was too tough uh, and they need to come back maybe closer to the family, uh, or they, they just discovered that uh, you know, the public university is, uh, is, is not for them. This is a reflection I receive quite regularly then. Clearly, uh, you can join the university in September or in January. So for those that try, don't wait one year. You know, you can jump into it for January. So you save one term. Huh? So the first three terms, you will be alone with the January intake. But then after, you, you, you join the other students that came in September uh, for the specialization term. Um, so then at the end, you are all together. Uh, there is one internship possible during the first year, during the summer, uh, after the first year or in between, if you started in January. The second term, uh, the second year, sorry, is about deepening functional knowledge and having an international experience. So we have a term of class, which is called the semester three here, uh, where we will go a bit more inside, you know, the functional business knowledge with specific topics and we have during the second year uh, one term where students have to go abroad and study in partner institutions um, academic content you know follow class there and we are going to explain to you what are the partners and what will be you know the partner list uh, hopefully when we will have the ACSB accreditation soon so one term here, one term abroad to study, and then an additional optional internship possible. And then during the third year, there will be all together doing one term of class and uh, one term, it's the final internship, which can be six months long. Um, the students finishes with their, with their big internship. So this is the, the coverage of the three-year degree diploma. The honors track is exactly the same, uh, but we start adding classes, first year, second term. We have additional classes, second year, and one of the optional internship is compulsory. And finally, during the third year, we have additional classes and a final capstone project to deliver, which is a major assignment throughout the entire year followed by one professor, you know, one student, one professor, and they work together till uh, June. Uh, they have to deliver and present and defend, we call that the defense, uh, their capstan project in June. More or less, this is the global vision of the structure of the three years. We can go a bit more into detail now in terms of academic content, uh, Lord, do not hesitate to, inter uh, to, to, to interrupt me if, if you have comments. Huh? Um, but for the moment, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, whatever uh, specialization you choose, half of the program, half of the content is common to all the students. Uh, uh, we're speaking about uh, theoretical foundations, uh, even some particular knowledge that for us are very important, soft skills, very important. Uh, so this is covering, uh, that will present 50% of the students. Year one and year two, students will choose a track. Uh, so they can choose either to do business management or marketing and communication throughout the first two years. So that gives a kind of um, little color to their studies. It's not a lot, huh? it's, it's, a, it's less than a minor, huh? it's, it's just a, a flavor. Um, 
where uh, either you will be a bit more quantitative with the business management or you will go into this creativity part, marketing and communication part uh, with the second one. At the third year, so you choose your specialization. We already saw them. In this slide, there is one additional line that maybe you did not saw uh, before, and it's normal. It's the Monaco Banking and Financial Services. So for the first five specializations, you do your term with additional classes in fall, and you do your internship in spring. Uh, but for the Monaco Banking and Financial Services, it's a special third year that we created under the demand of the government in Monaco to support you know, the territory. Uh, it's an apprenticeship program where students, it's a very small cohort, 10 to 15 students, where students will work throughout the entire year. Uh, they will be uh, working in a bank in Monaco for three days a week, and Thursday and Friday, they come to the university to study. So they are paid, tuition fees are paid by the bank, so of course, it's a super nice opportunity for students uh, that uh, want to penetrate you know, the banking uh, environment in Monaco, uh, because this one, we know normally, you know, banks are investing on them because they, they paid their tuition fees. So usually they stay in the bank uh, for either to continue with the master in apprenticeship we have because the finance uh, master is delivered either in full time or apprenticeship, or they, they, get, a, they get a position usually uh, to, to start working for their life. So that's the sixth specialty of the bachelor program. Okay, I continue a bit. So uh, this is really in detail what are the classes and how the program is structured. So basically, this is the first year semester, uh, semester one. So what students uh, have when they start their studies. So if you guys will start in January with us, these are the classes you will have with us. Um, basically, the classes are structured into three modules for a given student. One module is uh, usually the functional business knowledge. So for the first term, we're speaking about international business and markets. Um, and we have three classes inside that can compensate each other in order, you know, at the end to get the credits that are supported by the module. The second module usually is about, you know, uh, self-development, soft skills, um, things that are important for you, but less uh, functional business knowledge more you know towards personal development okay so and you will have that you know every term and you have uh, one uh, the track you can have you see micro and international relation is for the students that choose the management track and the other one that are choosing the marketing and communication track we have advertising and symbols and computer graphics Okay, we cover IT, you can choose a second language as well, you can start a new language. So we have uh, Italian, Russian, Spanish and Chinese. And of course, the big class, which is uh, usually, uh, you know, taken by our students is French, because uh, you need a bit of French to survive, to be honest, in the environment. In Monaco, everybody speaks English, it's not a problem. At IOM, of course, you know, the business language is English, so this is neither a problem. But when you go, uh, you know, a bit in Italy, or if you want to go in Nice, as far as you are in France, uh, then a bit of, uh, you know, French survival is needed, I think, uh, to interact, you know, with the community and uh, in the bars and restaurants or to get your bread, simply. They don't speak English in the bakery, I can tell you. Uh, the second semester, uh, is the same, you see, we have the core functional business module uh, with the three classes. Here it's about managing people and resources. We have the soft skills one um, with professional communication, particularly this one, uh, CV writing, uh, e-profile, uh, how to seek for a job, how to communicate in the business environment. So this is very applied. Um, and we have the two tracks. And it is here that we start having additional classes for the honors track, okay? Uh, I won't go into the detail of each class. If you, if you want additional information, we can have you know, individual discussions afterwards or in the next weeks in, in order to, to, to go a bit more in detail. We have the syllabus for each class, of course, the textbooks for almost needed for almost each class. Um, and uh, in terms of grading, maybe this is something you need to know. Uh, each class 
are assessed on a continuous assessment process. 50% of the courses grade for each class, huh, each line, uh, will be in continuous assessment and 50% will be in the final exam. So in the continuous assessment, we have one particular element which is uh, always here for everybody and very important for us is class participation and preparedness that includes attendance. Attendance is compulsory uh, at IOM. You have to be in class. Uh, these days, uh, you have to be in class because we are still open and uh, we have students in quarantine, students locked down in their own country. So they are connected to the class, but they are in class. You know, we have, we have cameras in class now and the students just follow the class uh, remotely. But if you are not, you know, in quarantine or not locked down in your country, you need to come to class. Uh, so this is compulsory at IOM. So if we go a bit into this other term here, we have the business evolution and revolution module. So we try to go into other subject, disruptive business model, digital economy, uh, what are the next steps um, linked to the consumer behavior, of course, sustainability, this is all linked. Uh, in the soft skills, we have, we have business ethics, critical thinking, very important. Um, some additional classes, cross-cultural management communications. We have the tracks, you see, and we have the honors tracks as well. That's uh, in the second year. Uh, it, this term is either in fall or in spring, whether you choose to go uh, for your exchange term in fall or in spring. Students can choose here. So they, they can go in September in exchange because they are in a hurry, they want to go in exchange early. So they will do the semester free in January when they come back. Or students uh, can you know, stay one more term in Monaco and then go on exchange you know, in January. Uh, to be honest, this year a lot of students waited, you know, uh, January to go abroad because to see if uh, maybe the situation was uh, evolving in, in the right way. Finger crossed. Uh, I hope uh, they, they will be able to operate uh, uh, wherever the destination um, will be. Uh, so we have partner, uh, partner around the world. So this is to speak about uh, exchanges um, in America. Uh, of the top, the sales. Uh, we have Fairlady Kinsons, uh, Suffolk uh, in Boston, which is normally the one uh, which is used the most for our students for the moment. Uh, Te Tecnologico de Monterrey in the Guadalajara campus, which is a super uh, big university, very, very high level. Um, in, in Argentina, we have UCMA. We have uh, in, uh, in Europe, uh, Zoo School of Management, MCI, and Munich Business School as well. Escopier, um, you know, in American uh, UAC, University American College. Uh, so these are some of our partners in, in Europe. Uh, we have our campus in Paris and London. So in our partner institutions, uh, if you want to go to Boston, you need to show you know, a very nice profile and you are in competition. We have only two to four seats a year. So there is a real limitation. Uh, so you need to push to be you know, in Suffolk for the moment. And if you want to go to London, it's uh, you know, another subject. It's, it's our campus. We open classes there. Um, classes uh, that are delivered there are uh, coming from uh, you know, the, the Paris. Uh, EBS school. So uh, it, it's quite easy, you know, if we have uh, 20 students, we open one group. If we have uh, 40 students, we will open two groups. So it's, it's quite easy. London and Paris as well, EBS in Paris, and Insect Business School, which is the Paris campus as well. They, they are, it's, it's easier for us to, uh, to, 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 to operate there because it's, it's a campus. So it's easy. So London and Paris are open for everybody. Maybe, you know, uh, Suffolk, uh, Fairly Dickinson, which is in the USA, but as well in the Canada. Uh, this is a bit more, uh, you know, competitive eh, to, to reach these, these locations. And if we go a bit Eastern, uh, we have Ranepa and MGIMO, which are two universities in Moscow, top level university, uh, super well known there. Uh, maybe, you know, not everybody knows this university in Europe, but these are what we call the top names um, in, 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 in Russia. Uh, Tonji is in Shanghai. Uh, we have a Bangkok University. We have Sung Kung Kwan, which is in Seoul, Korea, which is working well. The students are very happy to go to one term in, in Seoul. It's really different. And uh, we have a new CB, which is in Japan. 
uh, which is a partner in Japan. Uh, and of course, this list is uh, as of today. And, uh, and today the term became compulsory uh, last year huh, because the uh, program changed uh, than uh, previously. It was optional, so now it's compulsory. We are reaching 50 to 60% of the population going abroad because of the situation, the COVID situation today. But um, uh, as soon as uh, we will have, you know, this additional accreditation, if everything goes well, uh, we will be able, you know, to develop additional partnership with ICSB accredited university because they are all waiting uh, ACSB to, to, to exchange, they are working together. Uh, so this uh, list, particularly in the USA, will, uh, you know, increase a lot. Uh, so we will be able to have far more, uh, you know, uh, seats uh, open in the USA and maybe in new countries. Uh, we always ask our students, what are the next destination you would like? This is how we opened Japan recently, but uh, I hope uh, we will be able to have Australia soon because uh, we, we definitely had the request for Australia. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have questions? I finish maybe in just uh, the last term, which is uh, the specialization, and, and then we can go through some additional questions about that. So in the specialization term, we have one core module, everybody will do, module seven, global business strategy, the business game, the leadership class, the innovation and entrepreneurship class, which is a class where uh, you not only prepare your business plan and you understand what uh, you know is innovation management, but on top of it, as it is the case for a lot of classes, uh, your business plan will be presented in front of business angels. We know in the community and uh, you will have real feedback coming from the real world. All that is in partenariat with the incubator we have in Monaco, there are two. So uh, this is definitely something which is in line with the professional industry. And you see the specialization is an appetizer to understand, first of all, if you like the subject, to prepare for your master and as well to prepare yourself for your internship, which will come just after, uh, which will be normally in the field of specialization you choose. I am done with the general presentation of the, um, of the program. Do, do we have questions, uh, Laure? We just have a question from Sophie, uh, who would like to know what about the credits? Why do we need credits during a bachelor? Degree. Ah, oh, this is a super good question. That yeah. brings us to uh, before uh, before Bologna process. Uh, so let's let's go through a bit of history. Uh, we we had in the past in France uh, a university system with different things. We had the prepa, which was in two years, but uh, you were preparing diploma, but you did not get a degree. We had associate degree, which was a two-year degree, BTS, EUT, and then after that, you could jump into what were used to be called at that time, a licence. Uh, if you were in the university, you were having a DUG, which is a two-year degree, then a licence, then a maîtrise, and then a DEA or a DESS. Super um, uh, heteroclite with a lot of different names. Uh, and in the other country, was as well a bit different. In Italy, we had uh, la laurea, and then la laurea specializzata. Uh, when it goes to uh, UK, it was another name. And if you come from the USA, you had the bachelor, but it was a four-year degree, and the master. So you see the, the, the universe of diploma are definitely uh, different uh, before the Bologna Agreement. So Bologna Agreement came uh, in order to allow uh, the homogenification of degree throughout Europe. Uh, because when you were, you know, having a dug and you wanted to go to continue in Italy, uh, they were a bit lost because uh, they needed to understand what was your level and if you were able to join in the third year or not. So technically, uh, the Bologna Agreement created a very simple system that American with their US credit used for ages before. Uh, it's called the credit system, or a big invention. Uh, they just copied, in fact. And the ECTS credit were created. ECTS means for European Credit Transfer System to help students, you know, transferring and moving throughout the countries in Europe. And then the definite, um, they, they were defining a norm, which is one year of study will be the equivalent of 60 ECTS credits. 
So whoever is coming, you know, from another country to join uh, with the Erasmus, maybe the country, um, they will, you know, if they have 120 ECTS credits in their transcript, we know they got two years of, the, of uh, studies and they can come in, come continue to the third year level. Basically, it is like that. So now the diploma have been defined. The first level, it's the free level, uh, bachelor degree with three times 60 credits. And then you can go in a master uh, everywhere else in the Europe because you will have 180 ECTS credits and everybody in Europe knows how to read the 180 ECTS credits. So you can continue in a master, you know, in Italy, they understand because they created the second level, the five year degree, master level, uh, 240, uh, no, 360, sorry. And then after you have the doctorate. So it homogenizes the, the, the name of the diploma throughout Europe to ease and to help students mobility, basically, uh, by, uh, you know, giving a reading uh, key of everybody, uh, ev ev studies everywhere in Europe. Yeah, is it clear? I think it is. And uh, we have another question. Uh, so what can we do after uh, the bachelor's degree, actually? Uh, is there the possibility to do a master's degree or to find a job or something like that? Uh, both. Uh, of course, uh, when, when you finish your bachelor degree, uh, you have two possibilities. Uh, you enter the job market uh, or you continue to study. Today, the trend is to study. Uh, uh, we have more than 60% of the students that are continuing directly with the master's degree. Uh, throughout the others, you know, a, a bunch of them are going, you know, to come back after a, a gap year. Uh, so technically, more than 80% of the students, uh, you know, will continue with a master's degree. On the job market, um, to be honest, uh, students are in competition with each other, you know, on the job market. And when you have a bachelor's degree, uh, you will apply to some position and you will be in competition with students that have a master's degree and that will apply for the same position. So uh, today, the trend is to, to reach five years in general. Um, directly, because usually it's easier because you are in the study mode uh, and student job uh, and you stay like that. But some of the population, maybe let's say 20% of the population, you know, they do a gap year, they do a break in order to maybe finance a bit uh, themselves and they come back for studies. And you do your bachelor somewhere, you can do your master everywhere else in the world now. Uh, it's completely uh, open. Um, of course, our students stay with us uh, for a majority. Marine is going to explain that just right now. But uh, it, it is clearly, as far as your bachelor is recognized, you can go everywhere. And I can tell you, IOM students, you know, when it goes to, you know, coming to Louis, uh, LSE, London Business School, or what other university, I usually recommend them, you know, and they, they are usually, you know, coming back to me to explain what they are you know, experiencing uh, there. And for me, it's a super interesting and good benchmark to, to know uh, what they are doing and uh, how they are uh, performing. And they are performing super well. And I'm super happy in general because uh, it's, uh, it's very nice to have the feedback from the students. And usually, you know, they, they tell us uh, how they miss Monaco, but uh, the specificity of uh, what they see there and what we are here in Monaco, for example, the internationalization of the student population, this is common. All the students that are coming to a master elsewhere, you know, they said, no, no, it's not as international as, as IOM is, uh, even if uh, when they are in LSE, they, 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 they like it. Uh, it's a super, super nice university, of course, uh, but they are, and they are performing very well. So these are the two points maybe that are okay. Laure, is it, uh, does that answer? Yes, perfectly. And we're done with the, this part, I think, of the presentation. So maybe Marine, you can talk about the career services. Yes, the internships. absolutely. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Marine. I work within the career services. I'm the internship coordinator at IUM. And my job is basically to be the bridge between companies and students and help everybody get in touch and uh, hopefully help you guys find an internship. So just to look at what we do in terms of um, providing you help in finding an internship or job search support. So on a bachelor level, of course, I provide uh, individual career counseling session 
uh, to my students uh, who can take an appointment either physically at IUM or whenever possible also virtually uh, through Skype or Teams. Um, we review CV, cover letters, internship search strategy, uh, contacts uh, to be approached and etc. and LinkedIn as well. Uh, we do in-class career seminars where we review the CV, the cover letter, the job market in general, what are the skills and demands that you guys need to have to be competitive out there. Uh, we help you define and set your career goal objectives on the long term because of course any experience that will go on your CV needs to be meaningful for uh, your dream job or your dream career. So how do you achieve it? It is through meaningful experience on your CV, of course. We help you also sell yourself through self-selling technique courses where you will uh, learn how to present yourself, how to introduce yourself, how to do an elevator pitch, these type of competencies that you guys will need later on. We propose three internships throughout the three years at IUM. So you have two optional internships to be done during the summer and one compulsory internship in the spring of your third year. So unless you're doing a non track, in which case you have two compulsory internship, uh, one compulsory, which can be between the summer of your first and second year or the second and third year. And of course, still the second compulsory internship at the end. We organize every year an international business day. So a three days event where we invite over 60 companies to come and present, where you get to network and connect with companies. Uh, we organize speed -vis dating sessions on campus. So short 10 minutes interviews with companies, as well as on campus recruitment sessions with companies who are really uh, coming on campus to recruit and where you have your first interview with them. So that happens every year in March. Last year we had one uh, which happened right before the lockdown, literally the week before. So it went, it was still uh, held uh, on campus and partially virtually as well. And now in uh, last month in October, we organized also a virtual career day where we invited companies to present their opportunities as well as explaining what are the new skills in demand that you guys need to have and master in order to be competitive on the job market. We have two business plan competitions that are organized uh, in spring. Uh, one is the Monaco Ocean Protection Challenge, so much more dedicated to CSR, and the Mark Challenge, which is much more luxury oriented. You have business conferences every month, which you, got, you are all invited to attend. The, the topics are different every month, as well as the, the, the people coming. Uh, usually there are either top CEOs or top managers coming to discuss current topics or future trends um, within certain specific fields, which can be luxury, finance, sports management, artificial intelligence, among the, the, the few topics that we have. Also, once, uh, once a week, every Friday, I send a job listing with all the internship offers that I receive from the business community in Monaco and uh, abroad. Uh, it is sent to the whole school, so you guys have free access to those offers and you can, of course, uh, apply to them. Now, moving on then to give you an idea of where the internship recruiters at IUM. So if we can go to the next slide. Oh no, we have the Monaco Symposium on Luxury first. So the Monaco Symposium on Luxury is an event which we organize every two years, which brings the, the, the academic research. Uh, so professors who are actually doing academic research within the field of luxury with professional top CEOs from the luxury industry. So it's a, usually two days event where they discuss and analyze current trends, future trends, uh, of the luxury industry in general. So it, it is really a, a moment to exchange and to, to grasp more knowledge. Um, the next one will be organized next March, uh, no, April, sorry. So it is an event we organize every two years um, with uh, some of our professors and some business partners as well. And usually uh, it's an event where we invite more master and MBA students dedicated to luxury. But sometimes if you're really, really interested, we can, uh, we can maybe find you a small place for you as well. 
the business plan competition. So I told you earlier about the, the two ones that we have. The next one will be in May 2021, the Mark Challenge. Last year, we had 75 teams from over 16 countries because it's an international competition, which started internally as an internal competition just for Master in Luxury, then for the whole school. And now we have really uh, other universities from everywhere uh, attending. Last year, I think we had people from Canada, from Russia, from Italy, from France, from London. Uh, so a lot of different people and a good way to, to network internationally as well. Um, so 33 business schools. It is very interesting if you have a really good business, luxury business idea, uh, a business that you'd like to launch, why not participate in this type of activities? The International Business Days, which I was referring to earlier. Uh, so, of course, you have industry-focused topics and conferences. You get to shape your own program, meaning that we are not imposing anything. You get to decide which sessions you want to attend. And uh, based on your interest, of course, and the, 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 the industries which you might be interested in. You will have also practical workshops where we... Uh, invite you to work on your LinkedIn, on your video CV. They're very practical so that those workshops are intended for you to, um, to grasp more knowledge and to acquire extra skills. Um, and of course, you have the speed based dating sessions and the on campus recruitment. Among the companies which attended uh, last year, as you can see, many, many different names. You can recognize LinkedIn. We did a, a particular workshop on how to ace your LinkedIn profile, but we had Fraser Yacht within the yachting. We had Adidas, yes, Monaco, uh, Wyco in yachting again, Edmond Rothschild in finance, as well as Julius Baer. Um, so a lot of different people. Usually 40% of the program stays the same with companies who come back. Uh, and we, we try to change 60% of the program with new companies as well. Um, among the internship employers uh, who recruited our students in the past, uh, in 2019, you can see there's many different names and pretty much in any industry. So you'll have SBM Offshore in oil and gas, Fraser within the yachting industry, Silver Sea in cruising, Angel and Volkers, real estate, more Stevens in auditing, where Liam will be doing his internship in January. Uh, just signed his internship agreement this morning, very proud. We have Cartier within jewelry, AS Monaco, Société Générale. This is a non-exhaustive list. Of course, we have many more uh, internship employers, but this is just to give you an idea of who hired our students in the past for internships. Um, 61% of our students in normal time find an internship in Monaco. Now for 2020, actually 55% of the students stayed in Monaco, so more than half anyway, managed to secure an internship position in Monaco, mainly in luxury, of course, in normal time. This year, it's way more finance and professional services. Still some yachting, um, well, of course, less event management and hospitality as uh, the, 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 the current, uh, economic outlook is not great for those industries. Um, can we move on? Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to go much into detail about this because Patrice uh, explained it just earlier to you guys. The dilemma at the end on the third year is always, should I continue studying or working? Um, there is no right or wrong answer, of course, it will depend very much on your professional interest. Of course, if you're targeting finance, for example, there is no doubt that you will need a master's degree at some point. All the companies I'm in contact with looking for interns, they all require a master's degree and you will see that it will be very difficult to enter uh, this job market without a master's degree secured in your pocket. Uh, for other industries, some students, as Patrice explained earlier, go to get some experience for one to two years and then come back. Uh, personally, I would find it difficult to, to come back uh, studying uh, once you become a professional, but some people have the, the mentality to do it. But I would definitely recommend, and this is the right time to, to get more uh, more. Um, experience, uh, uh, studying experience at least, and get, and get higher, uh, higher education. 
Yes, I, I can add maybe because I forgot to mention before that the master format IOM is 10 months of academic life and six months of internship. So doing a master after your bachelor at IOM basically, you know, increases your time of studies by 10 months and then you start your professional life. So it's not so long. Uh, so it, it's quite convenient, uh, you know, just add one, one more year basically and then uh, you are done. So I think uh, this is, that was worth maybe, I think. Absolutely. Uh, considering that also your internship at the end can be a permanent position, so you don't have to stay in the mindset of a student. You, basically in four years, you can have a master's degree instead of five. So that's, uh, that's quite an asset uh, to be considered. What you can see is that 7% uh, of our students become entrepreneurs and have business ideas. So we foster a lot of uh, entrepreneurship uh, at IUM. We have partnerships with Monaco Tech and Monaco Foundry, two incubators located here in Monaco. So if you want to and you have your business idea, come and get some knowledge and then you can get support from our side to actually launch your business. Um, for the ones, uh, so, I heard earlier a question about what are the type of positions that I can land uh, once I become uh, an alumni from the bachelor program. So from the tendency of 2019, I, mean, I don't have the, the current uh, situation for 2020 because we're working on the data. But I, what I can tell you in 2019 is that first of all, 45% of the bachelor students uh, who decided to go work actually found a job in Monaco. Average salary uh, after a bachelor program, 25K per year, okay? So that's the, the, the average salary per year that you can target uh, with a bachelor degree only in your pocket. In, ter in terms of positions, uh, you can see there are many different ones such as sales associate, marketing coordinator, digital marketing and operations specialist, real estate assistant, community manager. So a lot of media, social media, and et cetera. Um, a lot of assistant positions. Uh, so of course, if you get higher, uh, if you get a master degree, you will be able to target higher positions with higher salaries. But this is the type of positions that you can expect uh, as examples. And uh, we have 3,500 alumni uh, all around the world. We graduated 200 in September. Uh, so our uh, alumni family became a bit bigger this year. Uh, we have a dedicated alumni platform, which once uh, our students graduate, they uh, are connected to, they can attend dedicated IUM events. Um, they are invited to conferences to uh, the different type of events that we have as well. Um, you have a, a dedicated network and uh, you actually can get in touch with IOM alumni, meaning that they're all super happy uh, to answer and to mentor a potential future students. They will give you the best feedback that you can find uh, about uh, our programs and um, as you can see, most of them stay in Monaco, 25%. And then among them, you can see that they're mostly in Western Europe, North America, and then uh, Asia as well. I am done. If you have questions, I'm here uh, to answer hey. them. Yes, Marine, there are questions for you. So the first one uh, from Julia. So what is the process for getting an internship? Uh, meaning, is it guaranteed by the university or not? No. We do not guarantee internships because finding an internship is a learning process as well, meaning that you have to look for an internship on your own, but we do provide the support to help you find an internship. Um, so I provide a job listing once a week. We provide counseling session where we review CV, cover letter, LinkedIn, search strategy, these type of things we will do together. I will not find an internship and tell you, you will go and intern there. That is not the idea and that is not something which will help you for your future as well. You have to know uh, the, the, the difficult process of finding an internship as finding a job. So definitely we provide you the tools, we provide you network, uh, we help you connect, 
with companies, but then the extra mile has to be done from you. Okay, thank you. And uh, after we have several questions, but uh, in different fields, but uh, it's the same question at the end. So with a bachelor's degree, is it possible to find a job in the event and entertainment management in the real estate industry, in the luxury industry, or do we need to have a master's degree? Absolutely. Is it necessary? Okay, so for event management and uh, not necessarily in the sense that, uh, of course, we have a master in, law, in uh, hospitality and event, which would help you grasp extra knowledge, but it's not completely mandatory. But you cannot expect to have a super high salary, of course, uh, because salary goes with the kind of uh, diploma that you have as well. Um, for real estate, I have bachelor students who found the job. I mean, all these industries, I would say that it's not impossible to land a job without a master degree. But for example, for luxury, luxury is super broad. You have luxury in pretty much any industry. So uh, are you talking about luxury and doing marketing and sales? Are you do, expecting sales? Are you expecting retail? Are you so? Depending also on the type of position that you will target, I would say yes or no. There is double, a double answer for that. I can add maybe something. Um, uh, today, with a bachelor degree, there is no all the sectors can 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 hire, and not 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 a problem. But the discussion we had this week, because we had a kind of a seminar with the third year students as well this week, uh, we we were speaking about. Uh, looking a bit further than, uh, you know, after your third year, trying to, to understand what should be uh, potentially your position five years after your degree. And uh, what could be, you know, the ceiling glass that will prevent you to join, you know, top position um, besides your, your capacity and your competencies. Sometimes, you know, the five-year degree uh, is, is needed to in big structure particularly to 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 go beyond a, a certain level that's uh, and so you you have to project yourself a bit, a bit further than only um, on only after the bachelor yes um we also have a question about french is it necessary to speak french is it harder uh, without speaking french to get an internship where yeah. I don't know. It's uh, maybe, Andre, if you can uh, specify I would, this. I would say if you're looking for an internship in Monaco, of course, depending on the industry, yes, you would need French. French is the primary language in, uh, in Monaco. Then Italian is quite requested as well. And English, of course. Uh, but you will find very few companies in Monaco with, where English will be the only language requested. So most of the time you will have to have at least some basic knowledge in French uh, to, to learn. But then of course it depends on the industry and depends on uh, the, the type of internship that you're targeting. Uh, if you're looking in finance, if you're do, more specifically, I'm thinking of private banking, yes, they will require French. If you're doing going into retail, depending which boutiques they might require more specific languages such as Russian or Arabic or Chinese rather than French because they will have other people speaking these kind of languages. So it really depends. Okay, okay, perfect. And then uh, always for you, Marine, we have a question from uh, Clara uh, who wants to know with the actual pandemic, how does the compulsory internship take place? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> So we've put in place different options for our students at the moment. Uh, they will either, uh, well, for the ones who found an internship, no problem. Um, we've given other options as well, meaning that another of the options that we're providing to our students is to carry on an entrepreneurial project, meaning if they have their business, a business idea that they want to concretely launch, we will give them support in launching this idea and they will validate their internship through that. Uh, another option that we're giving is giving more time to our students to find an internship and compensate the, the time with a consulting project, meaning that we're in contact with companies who are actually providing us with real projects that they have, 
but they don't have the means to actually take interns. So they will, the students will work on real projects for these companies while looking for an internship and securing an internship later on. So probably in March, April, May, uh, where the, the, the duration will be uh, a bit shortened as well. We cannot, we, we do not think it is a good idea to replace an internship by just a project because that loses a bit the experience that you can put on your, on your CV. But we're definitely giving more time to our students and other options to, to complete uh, their internship. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Marine. Okay, and so now I will talk uh, about the admission process and uh, what kind of students we're looking for and the tuition fees. So, uh, it's really easy to apply. You just need to go to our uh, website, so monaco.edu on the homepage. And then, as you can see, there is a red button with the apply online. So you just need to go there. All the application process is online. Then you will need to upload uh, several documents, such as your ID, also a picture, and we need your uh, transcripts, your grades, and also a diploma. If you already have uh, your diploma, you can add these documents to uh, the required documents. And also you will need to pay the 50 euros of application fees. Then the next step is uh, the interview. Actually, you will have two kinds of interviews. So the first one is the motivation interview. So moving on the next slide, you will see uh, there, here we are. So the admission interview, uh, it's done online via Teams and it's really easy. So don't worry about that if you don't know the, the tool yet. And you will have an English interview with one of our professors on, uh, also online via Teams. Uh, but if you are native English or if you already have uh, an English degree, uh, like an A-level or an IB diploma, for instance, or if you have an English test, and here you can see that we accept the TOEFL, the IELTS and the Cambridge, you do not need to do uh, the English interview. So you will only have one interview. And then there will be a jury who will assess your, your application and who will take the decision. So now um, I will explain what type of candidates we're looking for. So of course we need your grades, your transcripts, because we need to know uh, your academic background, but we are really, really interested in uh, who you are, because we need to know, for instance, if you do any extrascolar activities, if you have uh, any uh, particular experience, personal experience, maybe a professional experience or entrepreneurial experience. Uh, we also need to know why you want to study here at IOM, so your motivation, basically, and uh, yeah, to know who you are, really. So don't be shy. Uh, you can uh, apply at IOM, and uh, we will be glad to know who you are because we are looking for very unique profiles, actually. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about the fees. So it's more or less 12,000 euros per year for the three years of the program. So uh, you can see here that for instance, the first year is a little bit less and then a little bit more. So it's an average cost of 12,000 euros per year. And uh, then to conclude, I would like to, to show you, uh, um, to give you a little tour of the university. So of course, uh, just before we begin, I would like to, to say that the university is open. And for those who are in the surroundings uh, on Monaco, you are very welcome to uh, contact me and uh, to visit the university. For those who are abroad and who cannot come, so you can go online and on contact, on the contact page, you will see the tour of the university that we are now uh, presenting. So don't hesitate. So you will have a more specific idea of uh, the building, the brand new building, of the facilities uh, and so on. So here you can see the cafeteria. Uh, here is the main entrance, 
uh, here at the cafeteria, the inside of the cafeteria, you can have uh, breakfast, lunches, and so on, hot meals. So don't hesitate to go on the on this page. It's um, on the home page, still the same website, monaco.edu, and you go on contact, then virtual tour. So now it's time for your questions. If you have other questions. So I don't see new questions for now. I will send you all and uh, we will have a slide uh, with all the contact details at the end. So don't worry about that. And uh, also I read, write down our, our contacts. Um, then I would like to talk about the accommodation because I had a lot of questions about that. And I think we do have slides for, for, for that. So um, the university does not provide housing, a specific housing, but it's uh, really uh, easy, I would say, to find an apartment because we have uh, the student services who will help you finding uh, an apartment. So here you have um, a map and you can see Monaco. So the rentals in Monaco are a bit expensive. The majority of our students live um, near Monaco, so in Beausoleil or uh, in Cap d'Ai, but also in Nice uh, or Monton, because it's really easy to, to come to, to, to commute actually by train, since the university uh, is located one minute walk by the train station. So it's really easy to come and you can, uh, you can live, yes, in other cities like Nice or uh, Monton. And um, we also work, we, we have a platform actually, so moving on the next, yeah, to the part, which is a housing platform. And uh, we will propose a different, um, yeah, apartments, uh, uh, maybe you can share a flat and so on. And uh, speaking about that, the IOM Facebook group, so IOM 2020 is really useful for that because you can meet your future classmates and also you can find uh, opportunities of sharing a flat, for instance. And of course, uh, we work with re real estate agencies. We have contact of real estate agencies. So these are the main solutions for uh, the accommodation. Now you have a, a quick overview of the living expenses. So before Liam uh, talked about that, and uh, here, yeah, you can see an average rent for Beausoleil uh, or Cap d'Ai and Nice. Nice and Monton are more or less the same and in Monaco. And you can also see um, the, the, the prices for a cell phone plan or a travel card, food. This is an average, of course. But like that, you can have an idea. So this is for the housing and accommodation part. And I also uh, read several questions about visa for non-European student. So this is, um, yeah, thank you. So uh, this is uh, the um, student services that will help you with that. But uh, you need to know two very important things. So if you live in France, so if you have the residence in France, you will need to apply for a visitor visa for France. Instead, if you live in Monaco, you will need to ask for a student visa. So this is very important. You don't need a student visa if you uh, live in France. Be very careful about that. But don't worry about the visa because as soon as you are admitted, the student services will get back to you with all these info. Uh, I do not see any more. Oh, yeah, we have a new question. Uh, okay, so from Sophie, who is asking if Saint Paul de Vence is also okay. Um, well, it depends if you have a car, but if you have a car, it's really not easy to to find a park uh, to park the car in Monaco. So um, depends on uh, how you, you would like to, to come to, to IOM. I'm not sure it's a really easy uh, coming from Saint Paul de Vence. We, we have students that are coming from there, uh, even Antibes, but usually they, they, will, they drive down to Antibes, you know, and they take the train, uh, you know, to, to go to Monaco. Uh, so they, they, they park Cannes-sur-Mer, something like that. 
Okay, so Marius Alexandre is asking when you come from Beausoleil, you have to present some documents. No, 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 no. So um, it's a really, really good and interesting question. You do not need to show anything because actually, even if Monaco is another country, uh, you don't see the border when you live in France. So no. Yes, sometimes the street, you know, has uh, the left side of the street is France and in front of it, it's Monaco, yeah. and uh, you know, so th th there is once the border. It, it was in the 60s when uh, Charles de Gaulle uh, decided to, you know, put a bit more pressure on the tax in Monaco to try to uh, get back the French paying taxes. But uh, it was one day only in in the 60s. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now Alua is asking if I have a visitor visa for France already, so I don't need to apply. Uh, if no, I think it's uh, it's okay if you already have it actually, but you need to say that it's for IOM study too. Um, so in any case, uh, the student services will contact you and will help you uh, through this uh, process. Okay, so I don't see any questions. Okay, don't hesitate. It's the, the right time to ask your questions if you if you have some. Maybe a, a little point about the COVID situation, mm -hmm. how it is, um, uh, because we we had to uh, lock down in, in, in the springtime, but uh, in, in, in fall we did not lock down, but we put in place uh, academic, uh, let's say, framework with uh, uh, online classes for part of it and in-class classes. When students are in class, it's half group. Uh, next term, uh, we are going to continue this one. Um, based, maybe we will try to increase even the in-class component. So uh, I think that in January, students will be in class for almost all the classes uh, and then in semi-group half of the time. And uh, for the rest, they will connect to the classroom uh, one week out of two, in fact, um, when the other group is in class. This is, I think, the way we are going to do. Uh, the situation in Monaco is quite good. We were very happy. Uh, there was no second lockdown. We could continue having students in class. And the restaurants are open. Uh, you know, you can do a bit of jogging in the streets. There is no problem. So this is quite good. Yes, very true. So uh, I think that, uh, yeah, no, I don't see, no, we have, no, oh yeah, a little uh, question here. Uh, okay, in French this time, so let me just, give me two minutes. Uh, so I saw, are there okay. some students from Austria? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have okay. students from Austria, <laughs> this is easy. Uh, and uh, for the second one, um, yeah, it's for the specificities of the um, troisième année bank alternance. Exactly. So this uh, this uh, third year is open to al uh, what we call associate degree usually. So uh, you need a, a two year degree. Uh, that means um, uh, BTS, EUT, or uh, what we have, you know, coming from other country called associate degree. Uh, so it's the equivalent of uh, uh, 120. Uh, ECTS credits. Okay, as far as you have that, you can apply. Um, for our students, uh, you can apply as well when you are a second year to jump to this particular third year. Uh, there is a specificity for this one, and you, you ask the question in France, that means that you are the right profile because for this alternance uh, program, French is part uh, of the requirement uh, because the topic was to integrate, you know, the, the, the local community inside. So classes are uh, for one third of them uh, will be in, Fran in French. And usually the, the, the bank that are welcoming you uh, requires French as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, A lot of students from Romania, uh, Daniel. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> Okay, so I think we are done with all the questions. So uh, the next slide, yeah, exactly. On the next slide, you will see all uh, our uh, email address. So don't hesitate to contact us. I also write down on the, on the chat uh, the generic email address. So don't hesitate. 
Thank you so much for attending this webinar today. And uh, thank you to Liam for being with us, uh, Patrice and Marine. So thank you so much. And uh, have, a, have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.